Hi everyone, welcome to GTEC Techno Solution Private Limited. As of now, we are going to see and discuss about steam nozzles and its interview tips. So what is mean by nozzles and their functions? Nozzle is considered to be a duct of varying cross-sectional area in which the velocity increases with a corresponding drop in pressure. Apart from that, nozzles are devices used to accelerate the fluid velocity at the cost of pressure. The isentrophic efficiency of nozzle is defined as the ratio of the actual kinetic energy at exit to the kinetic energy at the exit when the process is isentrophic for the same inlet and exit pressure. So the next question is as follows. We got to define about the nozzle efficiency. Nozzle efficiency is defined as the ratio of actual enthalpy drop to the isentropic enthalpy drop. So this is the term which is called as nozzle efficiency. So we got the next question over here. Explain the different types of nozzle. So the different types of nozzles are Convergent nozzle, divergent nozzle, convergent and divergent nozzle. So if you see about the convergent nozzle, the convergent nozzle will be having the cross-sectional area that is going to be decreasing or decreases from the inlet section to the outlet section. If you see about the second type that is the divergent nozzle, the divergent nozzle will be having the cross-sectional area which tends to increase from the inlet section to the outlet section. If you see about the third type convergent and divergent nozzle, when the cross-section of the nozzle first decreases from the inlet section to throat and afterwards it then increases from its throat to the outlet section. So this is the phenomenon which is there behind the convergent divergent nozzle type. So the next question is Define nozzle efficiency and critical pressure ratio. If you see about the nozzle efficiency it is defined as the ratio of actual enthalpy drop to the isentropic enthalpy drop. So nozzle efficiency is actual enthalpy drop divided by isentropic enthalpy drop. So if you consider about the critical pressure ratio that is only one wall of the ratio that is P2 divided by P1 which produces maximum discharge from the nozzle. Let's move to the next question. What are the effects of supersaturation in a steam nozzle? Supersaturation is a state of a solution that contains more of the dissolved material than could be dissolved by the solvent under the normal circumstances. It can also refer to a vapor of a compound that has the higher pressure than the vapor pressure of the compound. The following effects in a nozzle on steam is that in which supersaturation occurs may be summarized as follows. The first one is all about the dryness fraction of the steam is going to be increased. And the second one is all about the entropy and specific volume of steam are going to be increased. And the final one is all about exit velocity of the steam which is going to be reduced. So we have the next question. What are the effects of friction on the flow through a steam nozzle? The final fraction of a steam is increased as the part of the kinetic energy gets converted into heat due to friction and also it is going to be observed by steam with an increase in enthalpy. The expansion is no more isentrophic and the enthalpy drop is reduced thereby resulting in lower exit velocity. 
The specific volume of steam is increased as the steam becomes drier due to this kind of frictional reheating. So these are considered to be the effects of friction on the flow through a steam nozzle. So we go to the next question what is mean by metastable flow? When the supersaturated steam is expanded in the nozzle, the condensation should occur in the nozzle, which is the obvious fact. Since the steam has great velocity, the condensation does not take place at the expected rate. So the equilibrium between the liquid and vapor phase is delayed and the steam continues to expand in a dry state. So this is the consideration of metastable flow. Let's talk about the next question. What are the effects of supersaturation in a steam nozzle? The following effects in a nozzle on steam in which the supersaturation occurs are as follows. The dryness fraction of steam getting to be increased. Entropy and specific volume of the steam are increased. Exit velocity of a stream is getting to be reduced and the mass of the stream discharged is also getting to be increased. We got the next question as the difference between the comparisons of supersaturated flow and isentrophic flow through steam nozzles. If you see about the supersaturated flow and isentrophic flow, entropy is not constant in supersaturated flow. Whereas in terms of isentrophic flow, entropy is constant and there is a reduce in enthalpy drop in terms of the supersaturated flow. Whereas if we have a comparison in terms of the isentropic flow, no reduce in enthalpy drop. And the next point is emphasizing about, we cannot use Molier diagram to solve the problems. In terms of the isentrophic flow, we can use Molier diagram to solve the problems. Here we got the next question. The critical pressure ratio for initially superheated stream is less as compared to initially dry saturated stream. When the back pressure of a nozzle is below the designed volume of pressure at exit of nozzle, the nozzle is said to be under damping. Let's move to the next question. What are the different methods of compounding? The different methods of compounding are Velocity compounding, pressure compounding and the final one as pressure velocity compounding. So these are considered to be the different methodologies of compounding. We got the next question as follows. What is mean by carry over loss? The velocity of steam at exit is sufficiently high thereby resulting in a kinetic energy loss which is said to be called as carry over loss or else leading velocity loss. Let's move to the next question. Does the pressure decreases or increases when a reaction turbine when steam flows through the fixed blades? So this is because the pressure decreases when the steam flows through the fixed blades. So the next question is all about the action of steam in a steam turbine is dynamic. So these kinds of short and crisp answers are frequently getting to be asked in most of the mechanical forms, NTPC forms and Siemens. Let's move to the next question. How is the Parsons reaction being made in the turbine? A very widely used design has half degree of reaction or 50% reaction. And this is known as Parsons turbine. The Parsons reaction in a turbine is being made by identically fixed and moving blades. You can find here the identically fixed and moving blades over here. 
Let's move to the next question. What are the characteristics to increase the efficiency of steam turbines? The characteristics to increase the efficiency of steam turbines are by reheating of steam, by regenerative feed heating and binary vapor plant. So these are the characteristics in order to increase the efficiency of steam turbines. We got the next question. The stage efficiency eta s is given by eta s equals to eta b divided by eta n where eta b is nothing but the blading efficiency and eta n is nothing but the nozzle efficiency. We have the next question as follows. What is the degree of undercooling? The difference of supersaturated temperature and saturation temperature at the pressure is called as the degree of undercooling. So the process of maintaining the speed of the turbine constant for various load conditions is known as governing. What is divergent nozzle? When the cross section of the nozzle increases, that is when the cross section of the nozzle is going to be increases continuously from the entrance to exit, then it is called as divergent nozzle. Hope you got an idea. Had fun, right? Thank you for watching this from GTEC.